Greetings, and welcome to the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast series. Podcast episodes are available on VHHA.com and on popular podcast hosting apps, including Apple Podcasts, Amazon, Spotify, and many others. We're a member of the Public Health Podcast Network, the Virginia Audio Collective, and the Family Podcast Network. Podcast episodes also air each Saturday at noon and Sunday at 10 a.m. on 100.5 FM, 92.7 FM, and 820 AM across Central Virginia, and Wednesdays at 1 p.m. on 93.9 FM in Richmond. Please send questions, comments, feedback, or guest suggestions to pcfpodcast at vhha.com. That's pcfpodcast at vhha.com. I'm Will Sullivan with VHHA, and today we are pleased to be joined by Dr. Nathaniel St. Purr, a surgeon at Fauquier Health. We'll cover his work with robotic surgery and much more, but first, I want to give him a very warm welcome to the show. So, Dr. St. Purr, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. So, you just recently joined the team at Fauquier Health, I understand, back in January. So, uh, just talk us through that transition, how are you settling in, and then maybe share with us a little bit about how you got there. Yeah, so I actually started doing some locums here at Fox here back in August. And then uh, starting in January, I decided to switch to full time. So yeah, since January, I've been here full time doing you know elective cases as well as uh, some <laughs> emergency ones. Um, but the transition's been great. Um, everyone here in the community has really welcomed me, and uh, everyone at the hospital as well. So. Well, for those listeners, uh, he referenced those emergency procedures, and uh, we had to reschedule our podcast just a little bit. Just so he could, just so he could be a, a fantastic surgeon and help out another patient. So that's what he's referring to there. So thank you again for, for doing that. So you're a surgeon who has experience with hernia repair, colonoscopy, appendectomy, skin lesions, much more. Um, but I referenced before you're also trained in minimally invasive robotic surgery, which I've been hearing about more and more these days. So can you talk about that robotic surgery and how that technology helps both you, the provider, and also the patient? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so robotic surgery, it's, it's been a great innovation, um, not only to just surgical procedures, but just patient care, patient safety. Because with the robotic surgery, you're, you're able to manually control um, a robotic system that's much more precise than, you know, just normal uh, human touch because um, it's, it's very detailed um, technology as well. So it, they've done plenty of studies which have shown that it, it leads to better outcomes. Um, less complications and, and overall less pain. A lot of people are going back to work sooner or just recovering from much more invasive surgeries uh, much more quicker because you're able to do it through a few small cuts. So you touched on a little bit how it benefits um, the patient. How does it help you as the provider? Is it something that took a lot of getting used to um, for you to be comfortable using that technology or did it come pretty naturally to you? Could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, a little bit of both. Um, so luckily in my, my residency training, did my train over in Detroit, and they they had a, a couple robots there, so we were able to even from the very beginning of our uh, training have some experience with the robot. You know, just doing modules and then later doing surgery. And so uh, definitely been using the robot for several years now. So just working on the dexterity using the robot, but also even on non-robotic cases that also helps. Just, you know, with the hand-eye coordination, etc. So it's, it's overall it's been a great utility and, and great addition to the practice. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like it. So you started a little bit back in August at Falkir Health, started full-time there in January. You talked about how welcoming folks have been, which is always great to hear. For those who are unaware, Falkir Health is located in Warrington, Virginia, which is a little bit of a, a rural area. So as it relates to this robotic surgery, what does having that sort of cutting-edge technology in a rural setting mean for the community? And then perhaps maybe more broadly, what does it say about healthcare in Virginia that Rural communities have access to this cutting edge technology. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. Um, I would say uh, robotic surgery um, has, has allowed uh, much more difficult surgeries to be done much more precisely, much more quickly. Um, and again, just the, the post operative care and recovery is, is uh, streamlined as well. Um, certain surgeries that used to be done uh, with an open technique, which uh, means like with a much bigger incision. Are, we're now able to do with just you know three or four small cuts, um, and a lot of patients feel they will feel pain obviously that first day of the surgery, but then you know a couple of days later, even they they feel completely back to normal. So it would take you know somewhere between two weeks or even have to stay in the hospital after a surgery, uh, be able to go home the same day and and you know back to back to work or back to feeling like themselves much more quickly. 
And then the fact that, you know, well, here in Warrington, they have this, this available, um, not only just for general surgery, but a few of the other specialties use it too. It, it shows just how advanced um, the care is here, not only in Virginia, but especially here in this rural area. Um, it's good to, to have those options and not have to travel, you know, long miles just to, to other towns or other hospitals just to get the, the same great care. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the ability to have that technology available to you in your backyard, I'm sure, is a huge blessing for the folks in that community. So I found your bio on Falkir Health's website to be really interesting. And one of the things that caught my eye was a quote from you that says, I hope you don't mind me quoting you to you. Uh, (laughs) As a physician, I strive every day to develop a deeper understanding of the interaction between health, social, cultural, and environmental issues in our communities. And first of all, I just, I think that's really commendable. I think it's so important that our providers take that sort of holistic view of every patient and look at factors, both biological and social, cultural, environmental, as you said, to determine what needs to be done to treat that person and our communities at large. So I wonder if you could just expand on that quote, just generally, what do you think about that? And and maybe what led you to adopting that perspective? I think one of the most important and often overlooked um, aspects of medicine is just education. Not only like with the patient, making sure that they understand, you know, the diagnosis or what they're going through and what needs to be done, but also like um, on the doctor end too, just knowing you know what kind of barriers there are uh, to patients, you know, seeking care or receiving care. That's why I try to always have an open dialogue and really try to make sure that you know our patients understand what's going on, why were they sent to me, what you know, what are the next best steps um, that works for them in their lives. Because ideally, if someone has a problem, you know, you want to fix it right away, but that's not always, you know, easily obtainable. Uh, or maybe they have, you know, a family emergency that they need to take care of first or, you know, all these other, um, you know, competing factors. So, yeah, I just try to get, you know, the patient on a, on a personal level, of course, and then just try to see the whole picture as well in addition to their uh, medical problems. So my my family's from Haiti. My parents were born there and immigrated here several, several years ago before I was born. But uh, we we often go back and visit. And I've done a few mission trips over there, too. And and I'd say through the mission trips I've done, I get a a deeper understanding just for the the social economic aspects of of medical care, which can be applied to, you know, anywhere in the world. So that's why I just always try to try to get that deeper meaning, deeper understanding, um, and try to educate as much as I can and learn from my patients as well too. Yeah, definitely. It's great to have that sort of two-way communication. And it sounds like that travel has really sort of, as they say, broadened our horizons. I think that's pretty applicable for everybody, doctors and, and us normal folk included. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing that. Before we let you go, it's traditional on this podcast to ask our guests a few sort of fun questions to close things out. So I have a list of 10 mystery questions that we'll draw from. So when you're ready, if you give me two numbers from one to 10, I'll read you those corresponding questions. Uh, Let's do two and four. Two and four. Okay. Number two, if you were stranded on a deserted island, what one book, one album, and one movie would you take with you to keep yourself company? We will spot you a copy of the religious text of your choice. So other than that, what are your three entertainment survival kit picks? This is a tough one. You said what book, what album, and what, what was the last one? Movie. Movie. Hmm. That is a tough one. <laughs> um, I think the my book would be Crick Crack. It's like a I – so I was an English minor in undergrad, and I took this, like, short story course. So Crick Crack is like a book full of multiple short stories. I am forgiven the author, but it was one of my favorite books I got to read. Gotcha. Um, so I definitely bring that book with me. Album. I may have to come back to that one. <laughs> That's fine. Take your time, and uh, and I'll make it easier on you if you want to just name an artist instead of an album. I have a, I have such a hard time remembering names of albums, so if you want to just pick an artist, that's okay too. I think I'll come back to that one. Okay. <laughs> uh, the last one was a movie. I think I would choose the um, the Batman with Heath Ledger was a Joker. That one. The Dark Knight. Yeah. Yeah. What a great movie. Oh, man. Yeah, I could watch that one over and over. Yeah. yeah. I'm right with you. Because it's the hero Gotham deserves, but not the one it needs right now. So we'll hunt him. Because he can take it. Because he can take it.
Unless he's not our hero. He's a silent guardian. A watchful protector. A dark night. Okay, so now the music. Either an album or an artist. I listen to a lot of French music. That's the thing. <laughs> I like it. So I'd probably choose, uh, right now, my favorite artist is Oswald. Okay. He's like one of the Haitian uh, French artists. So I'd probably get some music from him to listen to. Love it. Love it. J'ai passé mon temps à faire comme si je ne la voyais pas Et là elle s'en va Je n'ai pas pris son numéro Do you speak French? I do. Nice. Very cool. Okay. Um, and then you said number four, right? Yes. Okay. This one's kind of out there. Which, if any of the following, do you consider most plausible? Bigfoot? <laughs> Yeti? Snowman? Uh, the Loch Ness Monster, Chupacabra, the Jersey Devil, or UFOs and Aliens. If none of those apply, but you believe in something else along those lines, go ahead and share that with us, too. Um, I'd say UFOs and Aliens. Yeah. I, I, I feel like there's no way we're, we're the only ones out here. 100%. 100%. I've been listening. This is a little bit of a tangent, and who knows? Maybe I'll delete this from the podcast, but I've been listening to this guy. <laughs> This guy's YouTube channel called The Cool Worlds Lab. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's by this professor from, I think, MIT named David Kipping. And it's all about astronomy and stuff like that. And, and he talks about the likelihood of other civilizations, both past, present, future, and stuff like that. So I highly recommend that if, if, you're a, if you're a space guy. Yeah, I for, I for sure believe there's, there's got to be some someone else out there. I just hope they're friendly. <laughs> <laughs> totally with you. Totally with you. Okay, well, those are some great answers. And with that, we have come to the close of another episode of the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast. If you like what you heard, please make sure to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and subscribe so you know when new episodes are released. We want to once again thank our guest, Dr. Nathaniel St. Perr, for joining us today. So thanks so much. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. It's been great. <laughs>